you need to crop your pictures first. I'm like, all right, give me a break. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning, relax. Do y'all want to see the picture or not? Would you? Yeah. You know, I'm thirsty a little bit, right? All right, I got you. <laughs> Hard to the easy, into the wizard. My arms stay breezy, the dawn stay fizzy. I got a day that ain't I'm in the 740 fizzy. And I just bought a bike so I can ride till I die with What's going on, folks? With nothing better to do. I'm Blogzilla. This is the No Judgment Zone. Today I have Remy Ma next to me. Woo, legend. What's going on? Nothing. I'm what? chilling. I'm right. Welcome home. Thank you. What was your What was your last day like? The day you, you knew you were going home? Well, they I thought I was going home when I got stopped that nine days before I, that I was supposed to come home and put into those 23 hour lock and one hour out. Everything started going slow. Before that, every day I was working, I was like, oh my gosh, it's 15 days left. Oh my gosh, it's left. After that, and when it was actually in question whether I would be able to leave that Thursday or January because my actual con conditional release date was January of next year I was able to come home when I did because I went to college while I was there and got a um, degree which granted me six months early release so you know there was people telling me like you know this could take a good time and make you say that January I'm just like what like first of all <laughs> I cannot do six more months. Like, even, it, it sounds so crazy. Like, but you did six and a half years. Like, six more months, that would have been nothing. No, I was at the end. I was at the end zero. And I was, and I was when I was able to go home, I was telling them, I was like, yo, I'm telling you, I cannot do six more months. If they make me do six more months, I'm going to max out. And mm -hmm. that's to 2016. Mm -hmm. The day that I was supposed to leave and I was going to bed at night to go to sleep and it was going into August, I, I couldn't even think. I, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I, couldn't, I didn't want to talk to the white people. was coming to my door like, man, I'm telling you, they're not going to keep you here. You go home. I was like, get away from my cell door. I'm telling you, because if I flip out, I'm, I'm definitely going to leave because I'm going to have a whole nother sanction for going crazy. But I really, I could not fathom doing another day in that place. Like, yeah. when I tell people, that it's the most horrible thing ever. I think they're like, yeah, I can imagine. No, you can't. I'm mean, think of the worst thing that you could ever be involved in, or the worst place you could be. Yeah, it's worse than that. Yeah, it is. Especially when you have people that love you and that care about you and things that you want to do and need to do. Like you said, you were gone for 45 days and lost everything. Imagine how much things I had going on. There was people who whole livelihood depending on me being home because they worked for me so it i just i just cannot fathom doing another another six months another day another week it was like oh you'll be out at least by monday tuesday i'm like no another week in here absolutely not no yeah. and that's that's how i felt i i wasn't happy i wasn't sure like yeah this is nothing i'm even even though i know i was in the right I, I didn't feel like that. I was devastated. I was. I slept on the floor. And there's mice in there, and I'm scared of rodents. I was on the floor like this, just on the corner, like I'm not even getting on this bed. I'm not sleeping in that bed no more times. So that's how I had it in my mind, and and it was it was hard. Yeah. That yeah, so can I ask you one more thing? Um, did Pat really try to break you out of prison? Because that was a rumor that happened. Did that really happen? First of all, you know, he's amazing. People say all the time how, you know, it's crazy how he held you down. He's great. He's not James Bond, okay? <laughs> he, he, was, he was not breaking me out of anywhere. First of all, he's the most cautious of every. I tell everybody, like, you know, I have my parole officer, mm -hmm. and then I have my other parole officer, the one that lives in my house. He is such, when it comes to me, not doing anything out of pocket absolutely not no nope. it's not happening don't try so when that story came out it was the most ludicrous thing that i've <laughs> ever heard if all these people knew how strict he is when it comes to me. first of all i'm not even handcuffed what do i need a handcuff key for that's number one but what's so what's so sad is that the people who started the story and gave it to the newspaper they actually ran with it and when I was on Rikers, I was on Rikers in jail at the time. They had banned him from coming to see me for six months because of that. 
Wow. But I was happy because they ended up moving me to go upstate to the prison. So anything that you do while you're on Rikers, when you go to you know the state prison, it doesn't apply. It's a city jail versus a state prison. However, in my case, because you know I'm not special, they tell me that all the time. It's nothing special about me. You're just like everyone else. When he came to see me in the prison, they gave him a letter and told him to get off the property, that he was banned from coming to see me indefinitely. What happened? I mean, what happened for months, I was writing letters, calling my lawyer, having, you know, people um, send paperwork on my behalf, and it took months, months, about three, four months before he was allowed to come see me when I was upstate. Who's the people you looking forward to working with? Um, I don't know. I, I, I want to work with so many different people. Right now, I think I'm, I just need to solidify who Remy is, because there's still some people that's like, all right, she... I heard what she did on the Khaled song. I right, cool. All right, yeah, she went in a little something on the song with French and Swiss and Jada and them. But you know, so I feel like to, to a certain extent, I, I want to really solidify and you know secure who I am as an artist by myself. And then um, you know, anything is possible from there. It's, it's so many people that's out there that I that I'm a, I'm a fan of a lot of people. Yeah. Um. I want to bring in my girlfriend. Of this week? Of this week. Of yes, yeah, this week. My girlfriend for the week. I'm going to break up with her tomorrow, but it's not here or there. She's beautiful, though. Okay. Yaris. So she's going to ask you three questions. Um, it's no judgment zone. Like I said, feel free. Fun questions. Okay. Be honest, too. I, I don't know how to be any other way. I, feel, I, I can tell. So here you go. All right. So since you've been home, have you smelled Papoose farts? No, he knows better. Don't ever, <laughs> ever, ever. He, first of all, he's not even dirty like that. He wouldn't even fart in my ear. He'd probably like hold it until I was gone really? or like go somewhere. Like, he, he would not do that at all. How polite. Um, and describe a time that you lost a fight. Never happened. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. Boom. Never happened. Boom. I mean, unless you count all the times that my brother washed me growing Boom. up, but those didn't count. Oh, that was yeah. the funniest story uh, you said on the breakfast club when you was like, your son came up, he was like, I will wash you. <laughs> I had to, because then he just, one day he was like this, and the next day he came, he was like up here, just looking at him like, oh, he's going to try me one day. Let me just put the white still. Do not play with me. I will wash you. He was like, I didn't even do anything. Like, just in case you was thinking about it. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to mace you. I'm going to call my brothers on you. So that's going to happen to you. Don't get crazy. These kids is crazy now. Dude. I've seen it happen. Like, yeah. I used to be on visits and see people, kids come in, they just be going in on them. Like, what? That is, I, I want you to help me out. I got challenged to do the ice bucket challenge. Uh, so basically, what's, I just need you to pour ice water on my head. Wait, what's the ice bucket challenge? Well, it's this really dope thing that this guy who had an ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, started out and he asked people to do it because he couldn't do it. So, and it's for charity. So, you pour buckets of ice water on your head and then you donate to ALS. It's for charity. Okay. Yeah. And, you and the ice me. has been sitting this whole interview. And so you want me to dump the, the water? I would be so honest with the both of you. Would you? Would you? Yeah. You know I'm thirsty a little bit, right? Alright, I got you. So my friend uh, Jolie the Trunk Boy challenged me to do the ice bucket challenge for ALS. So here it goes. I have my friends Remy Ma and Yaris with me. And uh, I'm down. I'm gonna challenge some people. You'll see it down there, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in his hoodie. <laughs> I am challenging. Russell Simmons, I'm gonna challenge Mercedes Allen, I'm gonna challenge Yaris, Loki, and Daytuan Thomas. You got 24 hours. And that's our show, folks. Join us next week when we pour ice water in Remy Ma's listening session. Oh my God, I'm cold. <laughs> what up, y'all? It's your girl, Remy Ma. The ruler is back, and you are watching Global Grind TV. If anything, I can say that this guy was red, but I thought, nah, forget it. Your home, the Bel Air. Now singing it. They're almost tied as far as, you know, uh, smoking goes. So, so smoking with B-Real was very similar to smoking with Snoop.